Hi, this is Lin. Uh, this is my second vlog. In my previous vlog, I talked about my journey towards minimalism. And what that means for me is getting rid of all the stuff I don't use every day and only keeping things that I really, really love or the things that I just have to use every single day. Uh, as of the past year, what have I used? a lot what have I just thought I would use and just left in the closet collecting dust and the whole motivation for it is, is you know I moved down from a big house uh, my parents had and now I live in this 400 square foot studio in Chicago I work as a software developer I like things to be tidy um, I hate tripping over my own stuff I hate not being able to find my stuff I hate clutter um, and I just hate having all this junk that I don't even like, um, that I can't, so I can't get room for stuff that I actually do like. Um, you know. So, uh, uh, last video, if you want to see, I just showed you all the stuff that I have and trying to get rid of. A lot of it may seem trivial to you, but um, you know, all these things add up because you know I personally have a really hard time throwing things away just because I have sentiment or feel like I might use it. Um, but here is a technique that I feel is very helpful. Uh, you may have heard of this if you follow my Kondo. I actually don't know too much about her book. I didn't read it, um, but I have no bits and pieces. Um, so uh, one of the strategies is just do what I've done here. Uh, make a giant pile uh, of the things that you're probably going to get rid of um, and take it out of the closet, take it out of whatever space. I know it doesn't look very pretty. Uh, I don't have a lot of guests over, so no one really cares. Um, and I can live with this. I'd rather live with this giant pile of stuff uh, than to have everything hidden in the closet, feeling like, oh, it's, I have to get to it. I have no idea how much stuff it is. I have no idea, you know, what's even in there collectively that Oh, is this is all paper that I can just recycle in one go, or is this stuff I'm gonna have to think about how I'm gonna donate this, um, or if it's stuff that I can kind of use up like rags, you know, just to get an idea. It makes me feel a lot better, um, and it helps me let go because it's not quite uh, gone yet, but it's not, you know, messing up my personal space. And let me show you. I have the best of both worlds. This closet wasn't that uh, pretty before. Bam. Three empty shelves, including the bottom one. Uh, this is very clear. I had all this clutter over here. I could barely find my contacts. Could barely find, you know, my face creams, my uh, necessities because there's so much junk. Like toothpicks. I this box of toothpicks from ten years ago. I don't even know why I got it. Um, I never use toothpicks. I floss. Uh, so I have all of that. Just threw it out. Um, again, it seems like little things, but on the scale of when you have a lot of little things, it really like makes a big difference, right? Um, another, all this stuff in the bottom sink. I had all this junk, uh, makeup, old makeup when I was like doing cosplay and X really liked it. So I was like, oh, I'll get some makeup. And that's one thing I feel a little bit of resentment about is, you know, good or bad, sometimes relationships do change you and like they're changing you for somewhere some person you don't really want to be you're trying to be someone else to live to someone else's expectations that's usually a sign of an unhealthy relationship because it's not very sustainable to be pretending who you to be someone else uh, in the, your most intimate uh, place which is your home and your uh, romantic relationship uh, so that's just something I learned the hard way I'm still trying to learn uh, which brings me to, yeah, so this is still, so I have all these boxes still, they're filled with piano books or some old kitchenware, and the point I wanted to make with them may seem common sense to most, but uh, you don't have to stage everything at once. You can just do it in pieces, um, most critical stuff first, and then focus on the rest later. So just to give you an idea, you know, I have all these art supplies back here. I have this painting, uh, this giant painting, it's a Rothko cup. Rothko imitation uh, it was commissioned to for me to do uh, and I'm gonna sell it um, and 
some tennis rackets that were a gift when I was a kid. Stuff, you know, I don't really feel like good about just throwing away or donating because my mom gave it to me as a gift when I was a kid. It's a lot, it's a, even though we didn't play tennis a lot, it's has some memories. Um, I'm sure everyone has examples like that where it's a hard time just throwing things away. Uh, so that's why I've just made a pile. I probably would rather sell it than donate it unless it was for a really good cause because, you know, the fact is a lot of these donations, um, there's just so much, so much bounty uh, in a way, in this, uh, in this part of the world, I'm in, I'm in the United States, and the nation stores are usually so plentiful that people just go in there and stuffs pile all over the place. Um, they don't really need necessarily more donations. In a way, I'm not saying don't donate, um, but I'm also saying you know, if you can find a way to just directly give. Uh, your stuff to um, someone who needs it uh, that's probably even more helpful um, than trying to pile it up in the middle and then they have to organize it so uh, that's all I'm saying sometimes you know also because it feels good to get something directly for you, you never know with donations sometimes it's especially with clothes I think that's a big problem where we're donating clothes we think it's going to the needy and it ends up being trucked off to uh, another country, perhaps in Africa, uh, a country in Africa that ends up just selling it and ruining the local economy of textiles there. So uh, with clothes, that's kind of a touchy subject. With other things like tennis rackets, probably not so much, um, but you always got to try to be as knowledgeable as possible. We all have good intentions. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of research. Um, if you have any questions on that, I'm more happy to uh, share the documentaries I've seen um, that, that basically talk about that. Uh, but what I really want to talk about today, besides minimalism and just another step in my journey, is, is fear. Um, you know, it's, it's 2 a.m., uh, so I should be a bit in bed. I should be getting ready for work tomorrow morning. Uh, I work at 9 to 5, um, so I don't get to sleep in. Um, but, you know, what really motivated me to get this done, even though I already got home late, I uh, went to a boxing class, uh, ate dinner and cooked, you know, I don't have my mom to cook for me, so by the time I was done with all that, it was already like 12, midnight, um, and I watched a movie just to relax, which I probably shouldn't have, but sometimes you just have to take it easy before, take a breath before doing more work. Um, I know it's not hard manual labor, but it's still one of those things where you just have to be in, be in the right mindset. Um, is fear because, you know, I have fear of letting go. Um, also fear of the life. You know, I'm, I'm 28. Uh, I never really thought at 28 I'd be struggling with getting rid of stuff. Uh, I thought I'd be, you know, top of the world. I'm really killing it, and I'm really afraid of watching those goals and dreams slip through my fingers. And before I know it, I'm 30, and I should be thinking about settling down, not partying, or you know, really exploring the world and living my uh, my full potential and experiences um, while balancing, you know, career. And you know, it just seems like I can still remember when I was, you know, a kid, 12, 11. 14 um, and having so much hope for the future um, and now it's um, a lot less optimism in a way but also more more pride about what I've achieved so far um, a lot of things have come true I recently did a 24-hour um, theater festival uh, as a actor um, on Monday and I was uh, over here in eclectic LL theater it was a lot of fun um, never thought that my dream would actually come true. I remember, if, you know, three or four years ago, I was thinking watching a performance of uh, Babes with Blades, an all-female Shakespeare troupe, um, doing it like a Richard III performance. It was really incredible. I was like, wow, one day if I could just be a fly on the wall, one of the actors, a minor role, uh, I would learn so much. I just want to be part of that community. 
and you know five years later pretty much three four not even five like three or four years here I am I did it not just one but a couple um, of productions and it's not I, I didn't know these people they just cast me um, I did an audition they just you know cast people I think based on their response to the application and the resume and headshot um, and that was just amazing and, you know um, so you know your goals can come true you just you write them down um, or just have them in the back of your head and uh, work at them. You know, I got here because I took a couple of years of acting and improv classes, and you know, I know that's not cheap, but um, thankfully I was able to to be in a position where I could do that. Um, I think that really helped. Um, so they all say this, but it is true. Uh, don't give up. Uh, don't give up on your dreams and persist through them. Um, we'll leave it at that. So. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Have a great day. Um, we'll give you another update on uh, how the minimalism, minimalism is going. Um, yeah, And I, I said this in the last video, but I, I hope you enjoyed. This is not really something I'm trying to share with a specific group of people. 99% um, of this is me. Just I want to do it. Uh, one of the fears I had is just not ever really saying I'm going to do it and never doing it. Um, just this is all impromptu and I, I enjoy it I, I enjoy the opportunity to express myself and try to show a little bit of my more vulnerable side because um, let's face it I'm a in, a in a technical field we don't often have the chance to really show our emotions um, we're trying to solve problems and uh, you know there there's a lot of expectations on it our society to for men and boys to be really stoic and um, at least for me that's what I see myself as so um, hopefully you, this is uh, something I can do to just open up a little bit be more vulnerable be more emotional um, connected with my emotions um, and be healthier overall because I think you know when when you are more connected to your emotions you're not as afraid um, of feeling different emotions such as the ones you will go through when you try to follow your dream <laughs> so uh, yeah well one other thing I, w I really do want to talk about is you know um, one of the dreams I had <laughs> moving down to the city I, I was in the suburbs for a very long time um, after high school and after college and one of the dreams I had in the city was just being around people and just really being around the excitement of, of life, um, you know, specifically finding a very special someone um, that, that really made me feel something. And that's, that's always a dream I've had. Um, I'm lucky to be in a relationship now, and she's a very wonderful girl. Um, very funny, uh, and checks a lot of boxes. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, yes, I we met online, so you know, not exactly what I expected, but uh, also, you know, turned out pretty good so far. Um, and I don't want to say too much, but yeah.